on this episode, man, we took some questions from Instagram. Some of the questions turned into some great discussions, Danny. Yeah. yeah. Business, life, gym fails, the whole thing. Yeah, it was great. Trayvon? Um, it was just nice to ha- to be prepared for a podcast episode <laughs> because yeah. we actually like Excellent. put out questions on our Instagram <laughs> stories this morning. We're like, yeah. hey, throw some topics. So we came prepared today. We so that's how prepared. you know it's about to be a good episode. Yeah, facts. Dude, we're just so fucking well-rounded. This is the yeah. best podcast you'll ever listen to. Yeah. This is one you're going to want to share with your friends because there's some fire. Yeah, we're going to go to the episode. I don't think I can add anything more. No. Let's go. Flex Friday. All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster NAFO president. Yes, sir. <laughs> Cole yes, sir. Susak. Uh, today's brought to you by the new book that's on Amazon. Shout out to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and plug yeah. myself. <laughs> How to build confidence and win a life. Go download that, stream it, all that. All right, so we got some. <laughs> you like that, did you, Trey? That was a good shout out. Don't be small. Yeah. Don't yeah. be small. Um, all right, we got some questions today for the podcast, which is awesome. I'll tell you what, right now, this is where we're going to start out. We're going to start with the workouts. I think this okay. going to be good. Hardest workout you've ever been through. Hardest ever? Yeah. Hardest. So then you think back, <clears throat> what is the hardest workout that you've ever done? Well, the first one for me that automatically pops in my mind is an arm workout. Okay. It's the old fucking 20 method arm workout okay. that had, I think it was like three total supersets all 20 but they were all seven to eight sets yes i can't tell you how many times like me and the boys did that and never finished it we couldn't make it through <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. so and that, you're young too that so was, like, yeah damn, this shit is hard yeah like a freshman sophomore in high school that was probably some of the hardest shit i ever went through <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah for sure Trayvon? it might be a track workout maybe i don't know yeah so i was thinking um probably from like a track workout perspective yeah um there's this day in college where we did like it had to have been like 10 plus 300 uh 300s and yeah if anybody that's ran track like Ugh. 300 is yeah. it's an off it's it's not like an actual race but it's a race that you know that you practice yeah yeah and uh it's they're not fun at all especially when you're doing a lot like any what kind of rest any more that like any more than like three of them is like hard as fuck so yeah. and even just three of them so when you were a hundred i don't remember the rest you ran periods. the hundred right 100 200 400, okay yeah. okay okay so, yeah. so at least you did run the 400 though you weren't yeah. just a hundred guy going to three hundreds, yeah. but still three hundred repeats suck. Yeah, I actually had a. I was telling Dustin about him actually, and had yeah. to, and Dustin tried him out the other day, and he said, and he, I think he ran like three of them, and he was like, "Bro, yeah." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there like a reason why like you had to do that many? Like, was something going on? Did someone get in trouble or what? Where was the coach just on one that that day? No, I swear to God, like college, like. Division one track practices were just fucking different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different than high school. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, like yeah. the I would never forget the very first like practice I ever went to, like we warmed up, like just did the warm up for like fifty minutes and like it felt like an actual like, like, like you were tired. Like, like that was the workout, up. yeah. You're like, no, now we're gonna start running. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, and then lift too, and then yeah. Damn. Danny? That's wet. Uh, I think my answer is kind of twofold uh, in, in the uh, bodybuilding kind of style workout. Uh, I'd say the thousand rep workout. Oh yeah, um, that was good. That's a lot of fucking reps, it's a lot especially of reps. if you do it as it's written. Yeah, yeah, yeah so like tough. hundred on, but before you move on to the next thing or whatever. And then I, I can't think of like a specific one, but it's definitely like a CrossFit hero workout. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those are like designed to just like test you <laughs> mentally across mm-hmm. the board. So there was one. It was like. Actually, I do think can think of one. I don't remember what it was called, but it, it was five rounds, and it was um, 30 reps each. You do 30 GHD sit-ups, Little. 30 heavy-ass kettlebell swings, like all the way up overhead with yeah. the 70, and then 30 burpees. Yeah. And I got through, like, the second round. I'm like, I think, many I, rounds I think I'm and... literally going to die. No, yeah. it was five rounds. <laughs> so you ha- yeah you had to make it through five. Those GHD setups are sneaky difficult. Those are so hard, dude. If you yeah, especially if you don't do them, and yeah. then like you just get kicked It'll in the fucking you face, yeah. sore as fuck. You ain't getting yeah. up out of bed the next day. No. Yeah, uh, I think that one of the ones, a couple come to mind. One is the Quad City Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, yeah forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, Did that you go? Yeah, that one's wild. What, so, a, what a name. That was uh, <laughs> yeah. That was two reps with four oh five. Four reps. This is back squat. Four reps yeah. with 365. Ugh. Eight reps with 315. 16 reps with 275. Uh, would have been 32 reps with 225. 
64 reps with 185 and then 128 reps with 135 all in a row get the wheelchair yeah i laid down for like 15 minutes in between one of them or something like like for a few minutes i was like uh, i was fucking brutal cardio, um, bro. the other one was though was this old leg press workout which is ironic i'm talking about leg press setting it sucks but mm-hmm. we <laughs> we used to have this old one at the original old school gym that was there when i bought it and we used to just slam it off the bottom. Like when it would come down, we just fucking slam it. And I, I would do, do this old like Branch Warren workout, you know, from muscle tech days, like what I read on like <laughs> one of the ads or some shit. And it was two plates for 20 reps, three plates for 30 reps, four plates aside for 40 reps, five plates aside for 50 reps. So you go up in weight and up in reps. So I made it through it one time and it was fucking brutal, right? And you're, you're not allowed to get off the the leg oh, press shit. so somebody yeah. else racks the weights and you stay on it that's what that's the game changer it's not like you go and then your friend goes it's you go all the way through and you just sit there and so i remember thinking i i, I forget who did it with me i invited like three people to come and i was like i'm gonna fucking make them all throw up like that was my plan well my dumb ass i've told the story one bit the time but it's been a while my dumb ass ate a fucking peanut butter and jelly that morning for some reason obviously i didn't understand diet at that point so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to fuck these dudes up. <laughs> I don't know if you can see where this is going, but I was the one throwing up. So I intentionally was trying to make these three guys throw up, but the peanut butter and jelly rumbled and my feet were the one hanging out of the fucking bathroom, which was way grosser than this one. So I'm fucking throwing up. That's saying something. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> saying something. Yeah. that's impressive, right? No have. And yeah, and yeah. then it was like, so yeah, so those are my two that, that ha- come to mind. Have you guys ever thrown up for one workout? Close, um, close, but no. I've only thrown up from doing like sports one time, and I was like in like third or fourth grade during football. Oh damn! It was like a it was like a hundred degrees, and you know. I've thrown yeah. up from a couple a couple times yeah. from workouts. We used to like little, yeah. But like in any time in like high school pass, I never did though. Yeah. yeah. We used to do those 300s at Pickerington. They were fucking terrible. You know what I'm talking about. Did you ever do them, though? The, actually, the real hard one is, have you ever done them when you did the 300? They're called 300 kickers. You run a 300, and then you wait like 10 to 15 seconds, and then you sprint 100 back. No, we did the not do that. Either. Those are like yeah. obviously even fucking harder. Yeah, was, yeah there was a couple dudes. We had ass. like some like plyometric shit and stuff like that that felt like death after, but definitely made us better. Um... What about failing big weights? We're kind of on fitness stuff. Some some lifter fail stories. I know you got a great one. Oh, the the meat. Yeah, that's what you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you might have so, others, but that yeah, one's pretty just, funny. Yeah. So in what that meant, like 2018, 2018. Set the no, tone though. You Jack can't. City. Listen, one sneaky key is at this time frame. That's whenever I was like full in college. Didn't give a fuck about what it looked like, and I had the big ass beard. beard. Do you remember that? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I had like a full Amish beard because yeah. I was just like whatever. Yeah. It's like it's like a like it was like a playoff beard for me. Yeah. I was preparing I, I vibe with that. meat. I was I was training in single ply. And up and up to the meat, dude. I was smoking fucking weight in single ply. Yes. Like I thought I was gonna squat like over six hundred in single ply. Mm-hmm. So I think I think I think my goal was to try to go over six fifty in this meet. Yeah. So we get up to the meet, and the week before I was weighing like one ninety lean, and mm-hmm. I was trying to make it to one eighty one. I'd already been dieting, so I crash fucking diet, starve myself. Don't eat eat or drink any water. We went to the sauna. I could barely get weight off. And yeah. I somehow made weight. As soon as I weigh in, start eating food and shit, trying to blow it up, I immediately throw it up. <laughs> like I couldn't hold anything in. Yep. I felt like ass. I'm like, I'm fucking in for one. We go to the meet, you know, I put on my singlet, like my suit, not feeling great at all. War must feel like fucking ass. I go in the platform and I think I opened up at like I think it was like I, it might have been 585 uh-huh. and I've been smoking that I was smoking that with the band tension and shit and training yeah and I go there and it was hard as fuck and I, I believe I hit depth they're like no you didn't go deep enough <laughs> so I'm like fuck and I'm in that one like my CNS was already fried grinded like your yeah, I grind, the <laughs> grinded the fuck out of the opener so I'm like fuck it should not feel like that at all yeah so the second one I do the same exact thing doesn't fucking happen they re- they red light me again say like wasn't deep enough 
So this last one, I'm in the warm up. I'm in the like in the warm up room, freaking the fuck out. And you like said some shit to me. And you're like, you gotta like you have to fucking make this. Yeah, yeah. So I remember I took the biggest fucking nose torque hit and I grinded <laughs> through that fucking weight and they finally gave it to me. Yeah. That's probably the hardest like lifting story I have. But that wasn't a fail. What was the fail in the back room at the other? Oh, that means yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So a this right, is a good one too. So yeah. So then you know, crazy shit. Love doing crazy shit. Uh, we go to the meet at Empower. Shout out. But no, you show up at my house the night before to get a suit. Yeah, I never squatted in uh, triple ply. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck it. Dude, you're like, you just want to get triple ply? I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? So I go to G's house. I'm still <laughs> thinking like, do I really want to do this? And he just gives me this shit. I'm like, well, I guess I got to fucking do it now. Mm-hmm. So we go to the meet and I'm in the back warming up with like four or five in multiply. But he's never even had the suit. Never on had the suit on my life. <laughs> I fucking like miss 405. Dump it off my back. Look like a fucking jackass in the warm up room. There's some dudes like fucking like, you're going to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I came back, squatted like 6. 630. Yeah, squatted <laughs> like 630. Just was out, yeah. of, out of position. So good. <laughs> that, that grinder story though, the fact that you were, I mean, at 181 about to squat 600 multiply is fucking big, Cole. Yeah. I mean, that's what I just fucking opened. It was at. uh. Like the multiply one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but well, I would I mean, no, say the, the, single the one, ply, where, the one where I about bombed out. Uh, getting yeah. the fact that the last attempt, and you're thinking like, if I don't fucking make this, I'm done. It's the worst. It fucking sucks because yeah. I, dude, I was like starving myself to make weight. <laughs> Like, I fucking put my body through hell. You ain't never weight. making 181, bro. It was after that meet I said, I will never fucking cut weight for a meet again. I haven't. No. Yeah, why no, would you? I haven't. So. Uh, fail story. Trey, you got any big fail stories? Lifting well? Yeah. I was trying to think. Come back to me. I'm trying to think. All right. So. Daniel? Uh, a couple things come to mind. Nothing that's like, oh, my God. But, uh, well, the, fir- the first thing that came to my mind was early at OSG Yeah. was when I put the powerlifting belt on, and I couldn't get it fucking off. It was a it was a really what, that's a fail. What, yeah. what do you mean? It was really it was a really old old belt. He couldn't get it off, and it was like frayed and shit like that. And I put it on too tight, and I didn't know the trick of leverage with the oh, you gotcha. know the upright or whatever. So stuck I literally had belt. to literally had to go. Out. I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna get this off? <laughs> I like literally didn't needed help getting the belt off. <laughs> you cut it off? No, <laughs> he he just showed no, me. No, I had to show him how to gotcha. at, how to take the belt off. Take belt off. So think about it. He's, he's new. Brand new. He's yeah. trying to, and then he's stuck in his weightlifting belt. He has to come ask me because he can't to, get it off. I'm trying to remember if my friend was with me, but like he didn't know either. And we're like, we look like a bunch of fucking chodes. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was good. And then I guess just with like Olympic weightlifting, that's yeah. like the closest like fails, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Had some close calls like off of uh, like doing like split jerks off the blocks and stuff like that coming down. <laughs> coming <laughs> down on you. Like yeah. some fucking serious kind of like bend you back a little a little bit and kind of get a little sketchy. Did you split upper jerk back. like what three thirty or something? Three forty five. Three forty five. I knew it was out of the like rack. That. Yeah, yeah it's fucking sick. Bro. I missed it. That's wet. I missed it in front, and then I fucking smoked it so hard in the second one. I like all damn near threw it behind me. I yeah. probably would have ripped my like rotator cuff off if yeah. I tried to hold on. Yeah. And then yeah. the third one, I just yeah, stuck it. Smoked it. it. Yeah. That's probably like one of my best lifts ever. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um. My my big time miss that changed everything was when I bombed out of that meet and then started the squat every day. I went I opened at 650, same type of thing. Weight cut sucked. Didn't make 181 till like three in the morning. Had to weigh in at seven. Oh, it was a fucking shit show. The the weird thing about that meet though is my lifts in the back room felt pretty good, and then I went to the platform at 650 and some I couldn't get it right on my back. Mm-hmm. I literally looked like I never squatted before. I, I like, it looked, I didn't know how to unrack it. I didn't know where to sit at. Louis looking at me like, what the fuck, who the fuck is, like, what are you doing? It was so bad. Bombed out of the meat, six hour drive, had to sit there all fucking day. Had to sit there all the next day. Tony bombed out of the meat because that's who I rode with. Neither of us lifted once. Neither of us got one lift. We both drove six hours. Damn. I mean, it was fucking a shit show. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> Oh, it was terrible. The, one of my favorite misses, though, I was by myself in my basement, and I felt like I went to sleep. Oh, on that's right. Squat, yeah. But I had it on tape because I was taping myself for Instagram. So I go down with 3.30, and the lights go out. And then when I wake up, I'm like, oh, shit, my camera's going. So then I go over, stop it. I'm thinking, okay. Like, <laughs> so, scary, yeah. yeah, it's kind of scary. So I watch myself literally just like go limp and throw. I like, I, I don't remember doing this, but I threw, like I pushed the barbell away from me. And then. Thank God. 
<laughs> and I wake <laughs> up like yeah. two seconds later and I'm like, <laughs> jeez. Yeah. So that was, but I think, I think missing weights is fun sometimes because everyone else is so scared to miss. I just yeah. think people are, or scared to fail in general. Yeah. And then they work out at gyms where no one ever pushes themselves hard enough to miss. I want to go to a Y and dump a fucking barbell. I think that shit is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like to me, missing a weights is not like, like some people have asked this question all the time. How do you recover from missing lifts? The fuck are you, you talking mean? about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even understand that. Like once you learn how to do it, it's not, the, well, it's not even not it's deal. recover mentally. I think yeah. that's the thing. I think it's uh, like, so I missed and I up to that last meet. I missed two of the Wednesday lifts, my final lifts six weeks out, like within I missed two of them, but I handled the pressure so well. I knew I could make, it was like 820, 815, like total, mm -hmm. I, I need to squat 700. I knew I could. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't love that I missed it, but I didn't care. I didn't really care. Mm -hmm. So I just yeah. maybe evaluate them in my head that like different. Since you handled it too, like it's almost like it gives you the confidence that yeah. you know that. I got to run at it. Next time yeah. you do take it, like, oh, I got this. For though. sure. And so other people, I don't know if they don't process it that way, but that this has been a question that's come up kind of a lot. I, yeah. I don't like... I'm not happy if I miss something I was after, but it's not going to like wreck my whole day. I don't know. So no. What do you think? About you know, that? I just think if you miss a weight, you got to have the on to the fucking next one mentality. Correct. Or you can't be, you know, scared. yeah, don't be scared and you fucking boss up, take it again and then take it again and, and make then it, take it again and make it. I've done that during the first squat every day cycle. It was like two or three years straight. There were so many times I squatted in the morning, especially front squats, because I was still kind of <laughs> learning, and I'd miss the weight in the morning, and I'd make it in the evening. That's interesting. I just didn't yeah. give a fuck. I'm like, you know what? I'll just come back to this in 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, and I'd be down in my fucking basement. Yeah. I, I, I really, I was so dedicated to trying to learn all of it mm -hmm. that I, I literally got immune to the misses. And I think that that squatting all the time, so you got to figure if you only squat once a week, that's only four times a month. So if you miss two of them, you've yeah. only made two weeks of squats. So now that makes a little bit more sense. But because we do it all the time, so yeah. we miss a lot. But it doesn't make a big deal because I know, well, tomorrow I'm going to squat too. It's so day to day. Yeah. And it seems like a rule of thumb is is if you can't really count it as a miss until you take it twice. If okay. you miss it the first time, it might be because, one, you weren't fucking mentally ready for it. Yeah. Two, maybe like your foot placement was off. There was some small thing and you just need to I, fucking take it again. I know what it was. Your RPE was off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure the RPE <laughs> was way off. <laughs> All right, on yeah. to the Trey, do you have a miss? Anything? I mean, well, I haven't competed. Yeah, I know, but even like in so, training, was there anything that was like a fucking shit show or anything you can think of? I mean, I no? can think of a few times I passed on on a front squat that like, there you go. Those are fucking shitty because you yeah. just feel awful. Like, <laughs> yeah. your brain feels taxed from passing out. Yeah, the the lights going out on the way down of a front yeah, squat. Yeah, feel good at all. so shout, shout out to John Bros. John kind of, you know, said that a lot of people deal with this and don't even realize why that's happening. There's a nerve that runs, this is what he told me, close to like your, your collarbone. And sometimes, literally the thread from your t-shirt will push on it just right under the barbell and it'll it'll yeah. it'll take you out. That's why. So he said that his is really sensitive. He cut out 1980s style all of his t-shirts that he squatted in. That's awesome. Yeah, That's because nice. of that and he, he used to he said it bugged the shit out of him. So every sweatshirt, everything he ever squatted in all had the big <laughs> neck cut out. <laughs> Sounds about right, don't it? Um all right. Bal uh, this is something that comes all the time, but it's like balancing business pleasure and family uh cole Yo. i'm gonna start with you yes because you now are yeah. in the same household as michaela yep you guys are shout out shout out, shout out michaela yeah. no she's for big, shout out she's Pound, a big fan Pound 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 big Palace. fan loves the podcast she yeah. got all of her work all of her work friends now listen to the podcast so shout out to all the homies yeah Rebel yeah yeah what up I'm, I'm neighbors with Mr. Hawk. All right. So shout out. I am. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they're, bo yeah. they're boss. Um, all right. So now that you have, you know, you're yeah. wifed up, it's like you have to balance <laughs> business. Yeah. Pleasure and family. How, how's that going? Well, you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, what needs 
prioritized. Oh, okay. What needs prioritized? Sure. Obviously, I think it's a given with, you know, just every, how everything goes. She knows that I go to the gym and then I go to work. Yes. And in between work, now it's a balancing act of which business needs more attention. True. So that's how I balance that. That's how I, yeah. in my mind, filter what needs done now or what is upcoming that I need to potentially start working on and thinking mm -hmm. about. Then by the time I go home, it's what, like what's going on, yeah, checking yeah. in with that. But I will say it is tough. It's, it's honestly tough, like keeping up with like my family, like back home, seeing what their friends are doing. So yeah. it's really kind of like up in the air. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's a ju juggling act, but I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with juggling it all. Yeah. Like I'm not going to cry because I'm not talking to everyone. I can't keep up with everything. It's just like fucking boss up, you know? Yeah, you got it. Like roll with the punches, <laughs> like roll with what life's thrown at you. So Trey, um, how do you balance the work nature against spending time with your cat? Because shout out Bean. Shout out Bean. Yeah. Like Bean cats are pretty much on their own, but they still do need some love and affection. My cat's yeah. got separation anxiety because I got her during COVID. Mm. Oh. So wherever, because you've you've all been to my apartment. Well, yeah. I don't know if Danny's no, been inside, yeah. but yeah. Danny's seen it. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe you could yeah. invite Danny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my apartment's not that big. Like, it's not, like, that, that big. Yeah, 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 But even throughout my apartment, like, my cat will literally follow me, like, everywhere I walk. Yeah. Anyways, though. Um, well, yeah, I guess, like, my situation is a little weird because, I one, I work from home a lot of the times. Yep. So I'm chilling at home and everything. And then I don't have a girlfriend. And so your family doesn't live close and by. My, and my Yeah, and all my family lives, like two hours away so like i n basically never see any of my family yeah, yeah. so so you I don't really would be way out of balance because there's nothing even to balance currently i would say that's probably the best way to put it is out of balance because yeah. there's nothing to balance yeah mm -hmm. but when there is or things at least you, i know when people are in town yeah, so or from, things are happening from like, or like a work perspective like yeah. how cole said like that's how i always like go about it too is like what you know what businesses need, need need the priority like right now what needs taken care of right now and then mm -hmm. it's moving on to the next task of the day or something like that but um outside of that though like it's pretty wide i i, I live like a, i live a different life i feel like yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. Yeah. you All like right. your life though try yeah i do yeah. <laughs> danny now you're at you know now you have a kid mm -hmm. that's the picket fence zaddy arms zaddy arms where did the picket fence 1.2 dogs i always say that because <laughs> 1.2 dogs like, yeah because it's always these like uh when you get here, you have a white picket fence. You yeah, have one point yeah. seven kids and one point two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. How do you, how do you balance the day? Because I know um, this is new stuff for you. Yeah, it's definitely uh, different. It's definitely uh, tricky. I think the biggest thing that's helped, um, at least recently, because it's still very new, because she's not even six months old yet. Yeah. Um, is like trying to set up some sort of boundaries um, between the different areas of my life and trying my best not to over you know overstep those so what i mean by that is just like when i come here i'm just i'm just trying to like keep my phone away from me completely mm -hmm. so i'm not like distracted by wh whatever else is going on outside of work and just trying to get as much as humanly possible done here so that when i leave i can have the peace of mind so i can actually relax and like actually hang out with you know with linda and evelyn so so you're um, trying to be all in either place when you're there. Yeah. yeah. And it's really hard sometimes when I go home, That's when tough. I know there was a few things that I didn't get done that I wanted to get done. Yeah. Um, and cause I, I try to put my computer away <laughs> and like not get it out is, is pretty much my goal. It doesn't happen every time now, but like, yeah. it's just kind of like part of the deal, you know? Sure. So yeah, I attempt that too. And yeah, there can be periods of time where that can work and periods of time where it doesn't work, but yeah. it's like, a lot of people don't understand when you're not clocking in and clocking out that there's, you know, uh, the priorities between the days can be, we could be like yeah. kind of cruising yeah. and then something's way high priority and it takes more time and then it chills out for a little bit. Right. Yeah. The new things we got coming up at max, there's going to be some times where it's going to be like, you're in it until you're just not in it. <laughs> like, yeah. So a lot of people don't understand, but then there could be months where it's not like that. Yeah. yeah. So it just kind of depends. I think the biggest thing is that we've all communicated with everything else we got going on that yes. like if attention is needed, like it's need like the job needs to get done. Yeah. You yeah. Know? A lot of the time too, like especially on the way home since I have a bit of a drive, I'll try to y utilize that time to make maybe like call my mom or or something like that like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, just I to just too. to try to make sure I'm keeping some sort of a baseline with the, you know, more important people close to me. So I'm trying to find that 
Um, there's that one quote that I think really sums us up um, for me and for a lot of us, kind of the way we operate. It's like, uh, I'm going to find it, but it it really made a lot of sense when I was talking about just like, is it work or play? Mm-hmm. And that it's... Yeah, conv- it's, it's oh, like, and you're talking about now. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's almost confu- where I think is where we confuse our significant others, girlfriends, family members, because what we just did, the NAFO. Shout out. Shout out to the NAFO commissioner. You want to explain what NAFO is real quick? Yeah, so for this. the people listening, uh, if you guys tuned in today as we're recording this, is Flex Friday. And uh, today we, we celebrated the first ever arms competition within NAFO, which stands for the National Arms Federation Organization, so, where we had about 10 guys compete in uh, a max skull crusher and a max curl competition. So, you know, we had... Great, comp- great competition. We had Tyler Treadway take home the gold, but it was a combination of your skull crusher plus curl divided by your body weight times your arm size. So, you know, us, us, the arms <laughs> army, you know, we just want to showcase that, you know, sure. Our biceps are fucking huge, but we're strong too. And we just want to, you know, we can do both. <laughs> so Flawless. that being said, that's what we did for half of our morning, Yep. but it was for work. Yep. Yeah. But there's, but cause to us, exposure showing the brand having fun you know the personalities that everyone's you know kind of coming into that are showcased like that's all part of like the culture of max effort Mm -hmm. in the gym right but most people will look at that be like you guys just fucking off yeah but how many people came through the lives how many people are taking part in the deals you know how many people are thinking how much can i curl in skull crush yeah (laughs) that's real that's how that is fucking real for sure (laughs) and so it's like and, and just even like when Joe and a couple other guys walk, they're just laughing their ass off. They're like, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. And then it's all unscripted, completely off the cuff. Like, it's literally all of our personalities just, just Correct. thrown yeah. into the same room. Uh, I'm trying to find this fucking. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and people see that, but they also don't see the other like eight, like yeah. eight plus, 10 plus hours a day where we're just working on yeah, building new shit. Yeah, there's you sometimes know? when we're in this room and like no one's even talking and yeah. it's just everybody's on their computer, right? A lot of that. Uh, this was the quote I was talking about. Uh, a master in the art of living draws no sharp distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence through whatever he is doing and he leaves others to determine whether he is working or playing. To himself, he always appears to be doing both. Yeah. Sums it up. I'm like that. That's dope, right, Trey? <laughs> Hashtag wet. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to repost that shit today. Um, Posted you. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, I think I might, like, eliminate work from my vocabulary. I think it's just going to be I'm going to go ball out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, so or honestly, it's just, like, building. It's not it working, is. it's building. It is it is building. Like that's goal. that's what it is. It is building. Well, because difference. when you're working on projects that are exciting, like all of us have going on, that is what you're doing. Yeah. Cause you know like you're building for something for the future. So it's like it's different when you're building something that you're part of like this. I, I don't know, it just it, it takes a different meaning. So it doesn't feel like work a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm doing like taxes and arduous shit like that, it feels like work sometimes. Mm-hmm. But the rest of it don't. Um, all right, next. That's pretty tight. Yeah, it's that a good. That was some good stuff. It yeah. is good stuff. We'll take, uh, how long has it been, Kyle? Huh? Okay, we'll take one to two more questions. Nice. Um, do you guys like to look, look good, feel good, play good, or play good, feel good, look good? Hmm. Let, let me, let, let me, read let me read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Re- 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 Look good. It. Yep. Feel good. Yeah. Play good. Or play good. Feel good. Look good. Yeah. Shout out. Um, I'll go first. I'm going to go. I would rather play good than feel good than look good. Because yeah. I think as, you know, on bench day, if I have a great bench day, it transfers into everything. Okay. Whenever my bench is feeling shitty, it really yeah. doesn't, I don't feel good at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've, and I've kind of always been like that. I've never been like the type of guy like in football or sports or anything like that. I didn't want to wear the flashy shit. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to be fucking raw and rugged and get shit done. Yeah. And that would then in turn, you know, help that. Yeah. Trayvon? So... 
total flip side. Okay. Look good, feel good, play good. All right. Because you always see all the, you know, the NBA players, yeah. the NFL players when they're, walk, when they're walking through the tunnel. Yes. What are they always wearing? They're always they're swagged always stressed. Out. They're swagged yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. They're swagged out. It's confidence. Joey B. And it's always, it's always the best players it swagged is. out. Dion, bro. I mean, best player, a, yeah. Best players always swagged out. That's true. But is that because they're playing good though? Because I'm just saying, if you feel good walking in though, yeah. But if you're Joe Burrow, you know you're playing really good, so that's showcasing. But imagine if you're like playing. Is it for the like, chicken or the egg, Cole? Imagine if you're playing for like you know the fucking dolphins or something like that, and you're yeah. like, we're getting our fucking ass beat, and I'm dressed up like this. I don't like. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucking, you know. But is it dressed up or is it just the way they dress? Because. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm probably, you know, I'm just saying. I'm probably my swag's at level like one million instead of like five hundred thousand. If I'm also fucking winning, winning. yeah, and yeah. looking good, so you would increase this. You would you would be closer yeah. balanced because if you're then winning. honestly, honestly, if if I wasn't winning, I would go grungy. I would yeah. try to look like ass. Yeah, because we, well, because you're trying to like I'd be you're in the trenches. Up. Yeah, in the trenches. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's just my take. That's just my take. <laughs> right now, I'm I'm playing pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put on the shades. Yeah, I'm yeah. putting on it. Yeah. You know? All right, uh, Daniel. I don't know if I have a lot to contribute with this one, but I mean, I, I think I think I'm with Cole on this. As far as play good first, I don't yeah. know. Just I just think of like just basically putting in hours of work and being consistent. Yep. That's that's what I think of right away, and I know that's what I I can can. can I can control, and that's what I'm good at. Yeah. Um, so, so would you say, like, you know, grinder. after you get done with, like, a like a dope-ass ruck, that's whenever you put on your unit outfit? Oh, yeah, for sure. Or if I yeah. get a fucking haircut or something. Oh, yeah. If you get faded yeah. up. So yeah. for those listening, Danny's unit outfit is whenever he rolls in with Dude, khaki he, shorts. He loves this fucking a shirt. A black T-shirt, and then he's got these black fucking sunglasses. <laughs> Literally looks like a unit. Yeah. I'm glad that you've memorized that, Cole. Well, it's very distinguishable because he walks in and you're like, <laughs> Unit, Dan, Danny's not fucking biceps around Biceps are being today. choked out of their yeah. mind. Because yeah. it, it's definitely like a medium t-shirt, too. I really tried it's, to pump up. It's definitely up. shrunk. It's yeah. definitely a small t-shirt. <laughs> I yeah. really tried to pump up so my arms were at least the same size as Danny's. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, it is an illusion, bigger, though. Right? Yeah, his arms are bigger by a quarter inch. <laughs> it's an illusion. But in comparison to You're so else, sad about so that. so sad yeah. about that. <laughs> I got beat by Cam. I got beat by Danny. Trevway is going to be walking tall for oh. a minute. Also, well, I mean, dude, not to rain on your parade, but <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. Go though. ahead, try, please. <laughs> on the, Salt on, the wound. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> on, the score, on the scoreboard, you were you're actually fifth, and Tyler Galvez was fourth. They just accidentally called the order wrong. Shut the Are fuck. you serious? Oh, really? <laughs> wow, Tyler Seelover really. That's yeah. hilarious. No one will know. Does Tyler Galvez know? I, I didn't tell Tyler. Okay, good. Don't okay. tell. Okay. Yeah. We'll see if he listens. We'll see if he listens yeah. to the podcast. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I, all right. Um, I, I think I pick. Although my natural inclination is to look good first, mm-hmm. for sure. I think I probably operate more on play good first, because if you look at my style in the morning for my workouts, I would say my swag is not. That because I'm usually gonna be shirtless anyway, which at some point I don't think I've ever seen you match. Yeah, correct. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Because uh, I don't. Even, I I think it's a fake thing. He's like the kid from. <laughs> yeah. he's, like, he's like the yeah. kid color, from color Big Daddy. Palette, color palette yeah, I, fake. I think I think it's a fake thing. <laughs> color was definitely yeah. fake. I gave up. Like I. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just made that shit up. Yeah. So the you know long time ago I was like, okay, well I think people just made this up. That this doesn't go with this. I make my own fucking rules. You know, I don't you know, even evaluate it in I, the morning. I, I, I fuck with this like idea of thinking because you know in the design world, in the design world where some people would care about colors matching and they think just because this color's on this side of the wheel, you got to do this side, or some some things have to go here. Have that to be doesn't this even size. make it into fuck my that. Eye. Because you make your own rules. Correct. And you know you know why people have <laughs> rules, why there's rules in the first place? To be broken. To be fucking broken. Yeah. And we break rules. Facts. That's what we do here. So Rachel's brought that up to me a bunch of times. And then she quit bringing it up. I was like, I don't care. We make <laughs> rules. <laughs> yeah. She was like, you know that doesn't go together. I'm like, who says it doesn't? <laughs> My favorite one is, <laughs> hey, I saw Meek Mill wear an Adidas uh, like plain zip up with some camo Adidas pants and I have the same outfit yeah. oh my and God. I wear it. I used to wear it all the time when I'm smaller. I can't fit in the, the jacket right now, mm. but it, 
Rachel was like, that does not go together. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you understand how much this goes together. <laughs> like, 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 yeah. It couldn't be the more yeah, polar. She was like, camo does not. I'm telling you. I said, it absolutely. Go. Do you see the way I wear this? <laughs> so, so which one am I? I'm You're not like, sure. Right um, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have a whole different thought Yo, process. So Tyler C. Lover said something great whenever he, we were doing the Brad versus Chad thing. Okay. He said something about as long as you don't deviate from what you're doing, <laughs> no one will expect anything different. So it's on brand. It is. So on it brand. works. It works. Just be consistent. Part of it is, and I remember Dustin's dad saying this a long time ago because growing up, besides my Italian family, he's the only one I ever saw wear Kangles. Mm. Dustin's dad. And he put it, and I don't know if he told Dustin this, and Dustin told me, or I heard him, whatever. But this was like, he put it on. He was getting ready to walk out the house, and he was like, "Takes confidence to walk out of the house in this hat," because no one else at home was wearing those except for like old school Italian dudes. And and I think he grew up that where he, there was a lot of Italians around him too. But it was like one of those things where, because you're now it's more normal people wear those type of hats a lot. But when we were younger, it was not that normal. We were wearing them to prom. It's not normal we were, for my age. See, that's yeah, what I'm saying. So does. it's like is one of those things like. Even though no one's going to say anything to you, you're still going to stick out, but you're not only stick out, but you don't give a fuck because you look good. So it was like one of those things like I just grabbed yeah. onto and I was like, if I feel like it goes, then it goes. And yeah. you have to go out of your way to tell me it doesn't. And I still don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of things I can't really name anything particular. Where Michaela will say, <laughs> Michaela will say something like in backlash to what I'm doing, and I'll say I like I make the rules. Like, yeah, who the f oh, yeah, but yeah. what's her answer back? She just it's usually nothing. Like she just <laughs> drops the conversation because she knows I'm just going to keep going on about how we make the rules. So Rachel has told me that I've basically worn her down over the years, where now she just doesn't say it anymore. Yeah, it's like you, it, <laughs> you know. So good. That was actually a great. I didn't know that that topic was going to be that good. Yeah, it's that was that inspired. was. Um, all right, this will be the last one. We'll wrap it up. What's more important, character or credentials? I think that's and that's just and they said uh, they just want open discussion. For this. Well, what's <laughs> what's yours? Because you, you've you, you've had a, like a lot of experience right. with you know people hiring people and stuff like that. What like what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, I'd rather all day long have people that are consistent and have good character because they can learn the skill. I think every one of you guys sitting in these chairs can attest to that, right? Because you taught yourself graphics, taught yourself audio visual, taught yourself back in the website, like you guys. And then on top of a million other skills, cause you guys can do a little bit of everything each. It's like, but I know that you guys were going to put the work in You're good people. You wanted to get better. You wanted to sign up for this life. I could tell that like relatively early. That's, that's deal. like why we all got the opportunity in the first place because Correct. of our character, not because Correct. of the credentials. Cause it wasn't credentials. Cause I, I know Danny went to college, but I don't know what he graduated with. What did you graduate with? I uh, ended up being business management. Okay. But I know, I know it was small arms accounting originally. It was. Yeah. But it's small but arms accounting. It was Cole, it I know Cole, Well, and Cole, I know yours was in business, right? But that wasn't yeah. why I worked with Cole. Yeah. And I knew Trey basically didn't want to stay in college, right? He just showed out. up. Yeah. So it's ne I've never really ever hired anybody on that ever, ever, ever. You know what I mean? So to me, it was all like, can this person fit the spot? Are they willing to do what's necessary? And then long term, can we ride or die? Mm -hmm. And you know, and it's been for some people and it's been not for some people. Um, usually that showcases itself relatively soon. And just because it's not, I will say this, just because it's not for some people doesn't mean they have a lack of character. Mm -hmm. It just means it might not be for them. But character, if there's if there's a, a subject, if the character is in subject, they're probably not even coming in at all. Yeah, I mean, you or could, they might have faked it for a little while and then it shows up. Well, eventually they can only fake it for so long. Yeah, I mean, you could have all the credentials in the world, but be a piece of shit. <laughs> you know? Oh, there's a lot yeah. of people like that. Yeah, I'd say a, a lot. Yeah, I've met a ton of people like that. So, for sure. um, but that's my kind of take on it. Um, and I think that even when I'm working with people that even aren't in our organization, I'm looking for the same stuff. If I'm working with a vendor, I want to know that, you know, that they're going to operate similar how we operate. Like I'm trying to find other people that operate how we operate mm -hmm. so our shit can be efficient. The expectations are similar. You know, if I have a, two different vendors I work with and one dude is just not operating the way and I think he's just kind of a shitty person, 
I don't care if I can find someone else that's like, I'm going to work with this other person. Sometimes maybe even if their shit costs a little bit more, but I can count on, you know what I mean? So like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at like, what's the long term game on that. So for sure. So what do you think like the main traits are? Like if you're looking for a person, like what's, yeah, I think that, um, so I think what goes over, no, I would say overlooked, but go ahead. Or let's, let's do it this way for people like my age. Yeah. What's like the four things you would tell them to work on to showcase. I think they can get to the next spot. I think the consistency of doing whatever it's going to take to get in this spot. So, uh, this kid that came this morning, uh, his name's Nate or whatever. He came, uh, with Jake, uh, a couple months ago. Right. And he's like, I would do anything to come train here. I was like, all right, cool. Well, you know, maybe you should do the I want abs thing. That's just what I said, right? So he goes and does it. He drops like 30 pounds. And then he asked me to come back like three times. I said, no. I told him no every time, even though he had a good transformation. I mean, he looked real, a lot better. He come in today. I let him, he, he wanted to recreate some picture of him and Jake from before. And he said he's doing the content. He's changed a lot. And he said, but he didn't front squat today. And so he's got some back issues. I said, get your shit together. Like, you know, like you can't, if you want to contribute here, you got to be able to uh, do the main lifts. And he asked me some questions. I said, go put the work in, bro. Like if you, if you, so then it's like, that's the next step. Mm -hmm. So it could take this kid a year. It could take him six months. I said, I've added other people that got here and they're scared under the weights. And then they don't last and they make up fucking things and they leave. And so like, I'm not going through that. So it's like, you know, I'm trying to be real upfront on it, but that's business and lifting to me. Yeah, yeah. So like I could tell the first time any of you guys pack sacks, if you're going to last probably, because if you're on your phone in between, you really don't want to be here. And then that one kid that was amazing. That was like only lasted one day and drove from fucking wherever the fuck he drove from. And then he was like, I know exactly what you're doing here. What's that? It's free fucking labor. That was during the fucking Arnold. He wasn't paying attention at all. I was like, dude, you fucking, I think he came for three days. I'm like, you fucking missed it. You need to go back Completely. home. Completely. Yeah. It's like, if you don't understand the value of being in this room and what's happening right now, you're fucking missing it. So it's like, I think ego got to be to the bottom. You might've just graduated with some degree. I don't give a fuck. Be the fly on Guess the Guess what happens when you come here? You pack fucking sacks and you get your ass kicked probably in the gym unless you're fucking Dalton basically, right? Yeah. Like it's just the way it is. So a lot of people aren't willing to, and I think it's partly social media. It's partly the comparison. They're not willing to do what every one of you guys had to do to get here. And people know part of the story and some of the story, but they don't only, you know, and I know cause I yeah. went through it with you guys. Right. You know what I mean? And I just think like, People got to be willing to go all the way at the baseline if they want to climb up into an organization like this. This is super unique, mm-hmm. but look what kind of life we got. So it's like, I don't know. I think the consistency, the ego, they think they're supposed to be a certain way because they got something that doesn't really work in my, yeah. in my, in my, my environment. So I don't know. You yeah, know if I answered one, your question. One thing that, yeah. One one thing that come to mind too, just from listening to like Tim Ferriss, like he, I don't know how many people work for him, but it's a small number of people, like less than probably five people or something like that. But I think I think it's actually one of the people who currently works for him. The way he got his attention was that he he basically did a project for free for him and sent it to him. So like that would be a great way to start if you're trying to get your foot in the door or something like that. Yeah, or just go, like. I think the biggest thing was like, where do you need help? Like looking yeah. for accountability and responsibility, yeah. but not and not expecting anything. That's what yeah. I mean. That's pretty much what yeah. I had. It was for like, sure. whatever happens, if I'm here three months, it's still it's still gonna be fucking cool. You know? Yeah, yeah. Get, like similar to calls. I was thinking like the like the actually like having the initiative to do stuff. Like even when it's not so yeah, big. Yeah, like even like yeah. when it's not asked, but just like you know, you might be walking by something and know like, Hey, I know we're going to do this later today. So I'm going to start. So I'm going to at least get started on now or something like that. But having that initiative in the first place is huge. And I can see that early too. Mm -hmm. So Nick Sands is a great example of that, right? Nick's super quiet, Mm -hmm. whatever, but and he's a little bit older because he was in the military and you know, what is on the GI, whatever. So he started college kind of late, but he's like doing stuff. Like he didn't go, dude, I'm 27. Like I'm not fucking doing that. He said, what needs done? Yesterday he was doing, running the fucking weed eater outside because that's what needs. Like, he doesn't care. He just, 
he's trying to offer as much value as much needed and and just kept being consistent and i'm like dude i'm going to find a spot for you you just got to you just got to last long enough so the business can grow so we can create one like just keep winding into this and winding into mm-hmm. that doing everything that's necessary because you believe where everything's going yeah. and i just think a lot of people aren't patient and willing to do what it's actually going to take and then taking initiative the best thing i like about all three of you guys is you just do things you need you know that needs done and then you send them to me and i'm like oh sh-. and I can't tell you how many times with every one of you guys, I've been not surprised because I expect it at this point, but then be like, oh, fuck, they were already thinking that they're, it's already done. Like that's, and it doesn't have to happen every fucking day, mm-hmm. but it's like, that's the fact that you are that dialed into what's happening. And yeah. that's like, that's what I expect out of myself. Right. But then when your team operates like that, that, that changes everything. And well, so that's, that's huge. I think like the over delivery is like completely ingrained in us. Like it's like our new default. Going the extra you know mile I mean? is one the of the main chapters, bro. Thing. Yeah. Main chapters in Carnegie's that's book. It. Going the extra mile. You want to get. Let's make that your new way of operating. You never are going to get paid for more than what you're worth if you're not meeting the demand plus some. It's just, it's just what it is. Mm-hmm. You know that. And that's, I think that's what he said in that book. It was like. There's only two ways not to be successful. Only do what's asked of you and not do what's asked of you. Simple. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, that's the two ways. So people think that's kind of twisted up. What do you mean? I'm, I'm meeting what people are asking. Then you're going to stay the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The over delivery is where the sauce is at. Facts. Continued over delivery. It's a being above the line, right? Not at the line, not below the line. It's being above the line. Mm-hmm. And that right there is hard for people to grasp sometimes. I think that's yeah. a great point. Mm. That's a good rap there, you think? Yeah, yeah it's good shit. Yeah. Fucking round table podcast. I'm boy Corey G. Dude, we dropped so much fucking Yeah. <laughs> this has to be like a, dude, like a, this is good. Dude, dude, this is the good. most diverse podcast. It was on any platform. It was dude. good. Yeah, no. This is great. <laughs> we were just some well rounded motherfuckers, this I would fucking, say. It's well, called the round table. Yeah. <laughs> it dropping is. some fucking knowledge. <laughs> hey, Mish. Actually, for those listening, I'm drawing a circle right now because we are well rounded. Whoa. <laughs> Big time. Pull that clip. I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms Danny at Trace Feet and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. Roundtable Podcast brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. Shout out NAFO. We out.